Right, so now we're getting ready to fit the, um, the cross shaft for the gear change. So uh, imagine we're sitting on the bike. So over on, uh, over on uh, this side is the primary chain case. And over on this side is the gearbox and the uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, gear levers over there. But the gearbox is over here mm. and the timing case. Okay, so um, let's have a look. On this side, on the timing end, timing side, we start off, we've got this little strange linkage here. We'll see this in a minute. That uh, sits in the fork this slots inside that fork this little uh, sort of spacer here and then this spline sort of link here goes into the onto these splines before that there's this little uh, sort of collet here and that will run inside that little um, need a roller bearing Okay, so that will come through out the needle roller bearing, then onto the spline, and this is in that um, fork, and then moving the fork, that turns that and changes the gear. Okay, at the other, and then that's all done up with a nut when it's in place. At the other end, this is the foot. Okay, and now I think you can see pretty clearly why it's called a foot. As one of the two feet there's another foot which meshes onto it which goes uh, onto the actual gear lever right so then what happens is this comes out of the primary chain case and this is where it comes out through the needle roller and that little oil seal comes out into the chain case then then get this right and that goes on first yeah Okay, so we've got this uh, sort of spacer with a collet like a top hat spacer. Then this is the sort of bracket that then screws into the primary chain case that holds the shaft in place. Then there's a spacer on top. Now, in our case, this is a slightly special, slightly longer top hat spacer and outer spacer than the original because now we've got a triple x chain conversion we just need a little bit of extra room and triumph enthusiasts they supply these slightly longer spaces because they realized that you needed them and you could actually get away with them you know that the, there's just enough room in the chain case to move the foot out a little bit and miss that slightly wider chain wheel okay so it's top hat and the bracket then the spacer then we've got two flats on the on the shaft and the foot goes onto those two shafts those two flats okay and we need and one thing we're going to be absolutely sure of that this foot that there's no play there's very slight play there you probably can't see it but i can feel it okay that that foot going up and down so I'm fairly sure I'm right in saying. Oh, have I dropped there? Something, not something to bench. Okay, I'm going to turn this 180 degrees and use the other, use the flats on the other way. And from what I've done before, yeah, that that goes on really, really tight if I put it on that way around. So then there's no play at all. So I've got to remember to put it on this way around and I'll mark them to make sure they're on the right way around. Okay, because you do any play here, you're just wasting. Then you get a bad gear change because you're moving your foot, your foot. You know, you're moving the gear lever. This is this is rotating, but this isn't because there's play. So you have got to make sure one classic thing on T one sixes is play here on this foot. You must make sure there's no play. And then when that's on nice and tight, then we'll put those on. When we have we have to index the foot, we have to get the foot in exactly the right position. And I'll explain how to do that uh, when it's on. Well, basically, when this bracket is on, then what we do is we line the bracket somewhere like there, and we line the bottom of the foot up with the center of the bottom bolt hole. Okay, that is where the gearbox is, then it's timed.
So just like the just like the gearbox, it means the feet when they mesh, they're in the right place, so there's enough travel to go all the way up and all the way down the gearbox. Um, I don't think it matters which uh, gear you're in um, because you click up, you click down, they always go back to the same position. It's not like the gear quadrant that keeps going round and round and round the cam plate. Okay, but they do need to be in the right place, otherwise it, the gear change won't work. So that is the um, position line in the bottom of the foot up with the centre of the bottom bolt hole, the edge, this edge. Okay, we'll see that when it's on the bike. And that's basically the order of assembly. Right, I'm getting ready to fit the cross shaft for the gear change, which goes from this side through the engine across into the primary chain case. So, so this is what we call the uh, the fork. Okay, because I'll I'll show you other parts in a minute, and then this is where the actual shaft goes in. And there's a needle roller bearing in there okay so that's the fork all right there and then the gear shaft the cross shaft will come out here hopefully missing the oil pump uh, intermediate by an absolute fraction comes out here through this uh, there's an oil seal and then the again another Need a roller bearing comes out here, and it's secured on these uh, by these two uh, bolt holes here, and the actual foot, as it were, is out here. Right. So first thing I'm going to do is <coughs> put this uh, sort of link edge in the uh, in the gear fork, and I'll put this little spacer inside the uh, needle roller bearing. So all these three are already on like the, the time inside the engine we'll do that now right so here's the fork and here's the little linkage and uh, so i need to fit this linkage to the fork which is fiddly it's one of those jobs you're there for half an hour and suddenly bang it just slips in so first thing i'm going to do is put the little spacer into the needle roller bearing there it goes okay so when the shaft goes through it will be running on that spacer and the needle roller bearing then I'll put the little uh, sort of the cover on the link with the two flats on it and then I try and put that oh look at it going straight in <laughs> and there that's ready now for me to push the cross shaft in from the other side uh, and to mate with those splines but we only mate the shaft with the splines when we've got it in the right position on the timing side and the right position is with the foot in line with the bottom mounting bolt okay right so i fitted the uh, two spacers the top hat spacer with the bracket behind it then the overspacer onto the shaft followed by the foot in that really tight position uh, and then locking that on the end and I'm now going to put it in lining this bottom edge of the foot up with the centre of this hole and that then when it's in that position let's have a look first of all I've got to get it in through that needle model bearing which is always tricky not suddenly go. It's not suddenly going at the moment. There we go. Okay, and then it will line up with the spline, that little spline uh, debris on the other end. There we go. But don't put it in yet. Make sure it doesn't engage with the splines on the other end. I think that's it. Not sure. I'll check on the other end. Of it. That's certainly in the right position there. So that spline link is just about engaging. I'll put the nut on, do the nut up, 
and that should draw and that should draw it fully into the spline right so that's fully drawn at that end and hopefully yep it's still you probably can't see it but from where I'm looking the bottom of the foot is directly in line with this second uh, mount in there so what I need to do now is uh, uh, get those two mounting bolts in which isn't going to be easy but uh, I think it's the easiest way of doing it like that uh, I'll put some and don't forget I'm going to put thread lock on these two bolts so that oil can't get through into the clutch and then that's this foot tined because it's gone through and it's engaged with the splines in that little uh, sort of knuckle uh, on the other side and so those splines hold it in the right position and I know it's in the right position this side because the bottom lines up with that bolt hole okay so uh, primary chains on um, and then I have now now that this is uh, been uh, set in the right place it's been um, what's the word <laughs> yeah yeah indexed so that the bottom edge of this is in line with the bottom with the center of that bottom nut then i've i've put the two uh, securing bolts in with uh, loctite so we don't get oil going down into the clutch and then bent the tab washer over and i'm and then i'm just about to put the uh, put the foot back on i took the foot off so i could access those nuts uh, and then what I've done is I've just very lightly uh, ground oh, I'm in the right place I can't see the camera I've ground off a bit of the back of the foot uh, just to avoid it um, uh, catching on the outside of the chain wheel because obviously even with its like extended um, spaces it's um, a bit close so I'm going to do that I think we're fine but you know I just just be on the safe side have a look. So that's on full. That's that's fine because that's on full out, and I know it's. I know that isn't. I know that the uh, clutch isn't on. The, the this isn't set full out, and on full out it just touches. But I know it's not full out, so I think we're okay. Right. So that's a nice tight fit on the on the flat, which is what you want because. As I say, one common fault is this foot being loose on those flats, and then you know the the shaft is moving, but the foot isn't, and the whole gearbox gets um, sloppy. So then I've uh, got a lock nut. I'm going to put some. Uh, I'm going to put some Loctite on as well, and then we're going to tighten that up really nice and tight to make sure. That it doesn't come undone but mainly to make sure that it's holding that foot really tight so there's no play at all in it it will go down as if we're changing gear but I'm doing it up really nice and tight there so that foot is really good no play at all okay and that's it uh, we're done for the primary chain case uh i believe and so we're now going to put the uh outer cover on hurrah and uh our primary chain case uh work is done yeah obviously going to oil everything up especially this uh this bearing uh because it doesn't get that much oil uh, when it's being splashed around and uh and obviously that's the bearing that, that, that wears uh, quite a bit or can wear a lot of stress on it Oh, what else? So just while I'm there, just while I'm here, oh, I can just see. I've probably got. I'm going to try and move the camera. Just to sort of, while I remember, this looks like the sort of the, the back end of of where a, a screw goes in, and that's what it is. And on a T150, there's a screw that comes in from this side, but on the T160, that's redundant. So there's actually that that, that is a uh, you know hole for a for a um, Allen screw to go in. 
uh, which you use on the T150, but you don't use on the T160. So that's what that's there for. It's redundant in our case. Okay. 